um, Senator just says, Ron, you use $20 million from the sewer budget to pay for bike lanes. Um, you disagree? Well, I, yeah, I'm, I disagree because this whole issue of the word differently than $20 million is really not true. What, what I did as both the DES commissioner and as a member of the council that supported this package was to make absolutely crystal clear that this money is going first and foremost for sewer projects, basement, roof, basement flooding relief and about building green streets. When those green streets or projects, when we rip up those streets for either one of those projects, and that street happens to be a bike boulevard, then when we finish it, we're going to add some improvements that make it safer for people to use it as a bike boulevard. Uh, You're not, working in two different rights of way there, Dan. Well, Everything for a green street and a bioswale is on the inside of the curb. I just went out to maintenance. They walked me through it. And so to say that you're going to make some improvement on the real public, on the street surface, um, every, I mean, there are green streets all over my neighborhood. They're, they're beautiful bioswales, glorified ditches that, that drain water, and they're on your house side of the curb. They're not in the street. But you know what's helpful? Let's back up and look at how we got to this conversation. In the middle of a public hearing on the Mike Plant, Commissioner Saltzman introduced a utility fee yes. idea for the first time with no public process, with no consideration, without even ever having talked to his colleagues. A big surprise. And from that moment on, he put the council in the position of you either find a way to fund a portion of it or you're against the bike plan, which was an untenable position. And so the mayor, to his credit, worked hard to find something, but many times we magically find $20 million for any project. Actually, find $20 million for any project, it breeds the worst kind of cynicism in government that we've grown. Well, to sure, because then people don't believe. And now we're $5 million short. And I also need to say, no, I pay the highest sewer rates here. I have ever played, paid anywhere I've ever lived in my life. It's CSO, though, Ed, and we needed to do it. I'm, I'm proud no, no, that the city stepped forward on that. But when we realize it. savings from it, it should go right back into the sewer system. Exactly. We have done, I have done the budget forms year after year. Different colors of money. You can't exactly. take transportation gas exactly. tax for anything other than transportation. Sewer and water, sewer rates, they I go want them right. To go to the and sewer. we've got terracotta pipes out there that are crumbling. But okay, I guess you know, a 1.5 billion dollar bike plan is is what we need here in Portland. I, I, while I'm while still. our residents are being taxed out of their houses. <laughs> I don't really feel that way. I really feel that way. I live in a little bungalow house in Southeast Portland, and I can't afford my sewer as water bills. It's just, it's insane. Mm -hmm. And the businesses are saying the same thing. They're taxed to the hilt, to the point that they have to figure out whether they close their doors or can they start up outside of the city limits. We're moving everybody out. Sewer rates go up in Portland no less than 7% every year. And then, they start talking about how much we should raise sewer rates. I think that it's incumbent that the sewer commissioner agree to put a cap on sewer rates while we figure out how we can prevent further pet projects coming out of rate pair money. Because right now, we exhibited that we didn't need that 20 million for the big pipe. It's nice that we can do green streets. I'm very supportive of that. I'm very supportive of the bike plan. But until we figure out how much more savings there are there, we should cap the rates. Jesse, how would you fund the bike plan? How would you, you know, create Through transportation dollars. Where? <laughs> where? Where are there available city transportation dollars? Any, uh, any uh, uh, city, state, federal, any pots of dollars that we could find to improve the bike infrastructure I would aggressively, uh, aggressively go after. Right now we look at, uh, we look at... Um, but the bike plan identified about 10 million over the next years, I, I would have to believe that they were looking pretty hard for lots of money on many planners, um, and they could, so where else would you find them? I think the transportation bottom up. I think we need to raise the gas tax. We were going to level the free out more money. <laughs> but I'd like to ask about that. Okay. I can't, I've not read the last SEA, but my recollection of service uh, and whatever, but it's it's that's it's the whatever the city auditor's annual report is, the previous one, and I'm guessing this last one showed that the number of mile 
levels on what, what, what is the measure? unmet need? Unmet need is climb, um, whether it's poverty, deferred maintenance, mm -hmm. deferred growth, deferred rate maintenance. and climb. Six hundred miles. Okay, am I falling into the false cars versus bikes paradigm when I ask why doesn't that transportation money go to that? Oh, that's good. Yeah, no, that's fine. I think that fundamentally, bike improvements should come from transportation money. We do have to get catch up on the backlog. Uh, to make sure we're fixing potholes, to make sure we're uh, improving the road infrastructure, but also in that, improving the bike infrastructure. How could you do both? It's imperative to do both. I mean, oh, I definitely, it's imperative to do both, but it's imperative on <laughs> you to tell me how you're doing it. <laughs> if you look at, uh, I mean, the one suggestion that I have is we're talking about um, spending a lot of state money simply on replacing, importantly, placing the cell with bridge. If we were to consider a tolling mechanism on the Selwood Bridge, the state wouldn't have to sit, the city wouldn't have to spend such a large share of the money coming from that direction, and then we'd have money for some bike improvements. We can't take less money for our So, toll bridge so that you, the savings that are realized from that, the money that was going to go to improving the bridge would go towards bike and improving the bottles. So, let's, the city's going to get let's say $100 for tax money this year, right? $100 for bridges, for transportation. We could put $100 into fixing the Selwood Bridge. Or we can choose to put $80 into the Selwood Bridge, have the users pay 20% of the fee all the time. That's what, I think that's what I just said, okay. essentially. And then yeah. the rep, that money would go towards well, yeah, the, I, th I don't think people mind paying taxes if they're actually being spent for what they're supposed to be spent for. That's the first thing. And I think part of the resentment people have in, in this community about taxes is they don't get spent for what I'm paying for, like the sewers. They're getting spent for something else. Now, I'm probably the only person who's actually this on my website at forpdx.com. I think we need to figure out a way to register bicycles, charge a fee, figure out what the fee is going to be. And frankly, as someone who's growing a cataract in my left eye and is beginning to have <coughs> some vision problems, we have dark streets, dark bicycles, dark, and, and, and I had a friend who was run over and killed by a bike, I mean by a bus on his bike. But if we can fold in, for example, increasing visibility, lots of bikes here have no reflectors, no lights, none of the stuff to make the person more visible, especially at night. So if we can fold in some basic requirements, there's safety requirements on your car, why not put some safety requirements on a bicycle, charge a fee, register the bike, which means it's easier to track it down if it gets stolen, put a big reflective tag on the back, which also makes it more easy to identify rogue bicyclists who run down people on the sidewalk, it's only a few. Create that so that the bicycling community is officially a part of the whole transportation scheme and is paying something for that. And, and part of that conversation can be, are you willing to pay more for this fee so that we can dedicate that money to bicycling in the city? I'm going to stop you there because that actually sounds like an idea. And I'd like everybody to spend 30 seconds telling me why that is a good or a bad idea. We'll start with you. Great, and, I, and I've been talking about it for years because I think one of the biggest safety problems we have with bicycles is the, the animosity between cars and bicycles. Yes. I have said over and over that if we, and, and I'm not, this will not pay for bike infrastructure, I will tell you that. This is actually just a safety issue where uh, it, uh, drivers of automobiles complain that bicyclists don't contribute to the to the overall public right-of-way maintenance. Okay, I think we're 30 seconds. Okay, I like so the idea. I love the idea, the except, ex except, what? except it cannot, there's no way you could make the fee to pay for infrastructure. It's more of a, it would, it would be a token, look, I'm doing my part. Dan, what do you think? Yeah, I'm not averse to that idea, but I know that, that, that people who are bicyclists will tell you that you know they own a car, they pay their you know, registration fees, they pay their gas taxes. But you know, I'm not averse to the idea. I think that we should be encouraging bicyclists to get on their bikes. I think any fees, registration, uh, or taxes will make that more difficult. Uh, and uh, since programs historically show that they do nothing more than fund the program, I'm not supportive. Okay. As somebody who bikes a 
semi-regularly. Semi-regularly. Semi 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 speaking for myself. Okay, sorry. 